So this morning is an important message why I need to teach it and if I don't finish it, I'll do it on Wednesday because it to me, I could rush through it and then you won't get it. But to me it's very important because it is the balance of most Christians where they are in their faith. And I really need to help you and I figure it out. And so John chapter number 15 is where we've been uh, talking about, good to see you Vivian in church today. John chapter number 15 um, John chapter number 15 and shout out to all y'all that are working out it's, it's a good thing to see all y'all gymming, working and striving for health because true wealth starts with good health all y'all that are running at 5am amen, God is not in that at all but praise the Lord for you amen, God is, amen they call, pastor you want to run with what time y'all going, 6? God ain't up at that time God's not up at that time no, God's not up at that time. Funny, my, you know, really my time where I can really pray is at 4 a.m. because it just seems like God has nothing better to do at 4 a.m. but to wake me up. But um, that's just... So today I want to talk about this important subject, y'all. Very important. And you need to take a lot of notes. So I want to talk to you about misunderstanding God's methods. Because most of us are tripping. We are misunderstanding God's methods. And this will really help you because it's really helped me. John 15, verse number one, it says, I am the true vine, and nobody move. Uh, if your bladder's making you go to the restroom, tell it, be still in Jesus' name. Amen? So you got to hear this word. Just joking. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes. So number one, Jesus is the vine, the Father is the gardener, right? He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, <clears throat> while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You already are clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me and I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. You cannot grow by yourself. You cannot grow by yourself. The Holy Spirit causes us to grow. And neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. So you can't do anything unless you're connected to God. And you can't do, you cannot grow. Even if you're connected to God, you can't grow by yourself. It's the work of the Holy Spirit that causes you to grow. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you will be like a branch that's thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown in the fire, burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatsoever wish and it shall be done unto you. This is to my Father's glory that you may bear much fruit. That you may bear what? What type of fruit? Okay, much fruit. So here it is. Let me, um, let me get these cloud. Let me get those baskets right there. So here, all of those baskets. So here's what God is saying. There are two, there are two categories of people. Number one, there's a category that is not producing anything then there's another category of Christians that are producing they're either producing fruit more fruit or much fruit you're either in two of these categories so this scripture this is the last message that Jesus tells his disciples I'm about to leave y'all this is the next day he gets betrayed by Judas I'm about to leave but I need you to understand what's happening that if you're connected to me, you need to be bearing fruit, more fruit or much fruit. Got it. So now let's say, give me this basket right here. So you can just leave these baskets up front. So here's this basket and I need that trash can. So this basket is the person that's bearing no fruit. God is looking for us to produce something. The vine dresser, the father, he looks and puts a basket under your life and says, I'm going to put this basket under your life because I'm expecting degrees of fruit from your life. And if I don't get these degrees of fruit from your life, then I must do something to make sure that you start producing. So if you are living and you are not producing any fruit, the Father looks at your leaves and your tree and it says this, he cuts it off. 
But that's not what it means though. Because when we think of take away, we think of him removing it because of our English language. But in its original vernacular, which is the New Testament is written in Greek, the word that is what we translate take away is really the word to lift up. It's called iro. It is the word <clears throat> that means to lift up. When God sees a branch not bearing fruit he recognizes that the reason why it's not bearing fruit is because branches tend to lean towards the ground and when they start leaning towards the ground, they get dirt on them, they get mud on them, which blocks the sunlight from allowing it to grow. What the father does is he doesn't just cut it away, he lifts it. So no matter how far you have fallen, no matter how dirty you are, God does not get rid of you because you're his. And scripture says anybody that is God's, that the devil can't pluck you out of his hands. But what he does do is he lifts you up and then he starts to recognize that you got all of this dirt on you, you got all of this mud on you, you got all of this sin on you. All of us are sinners, but there's a difference between being a sinner and living in sin. And when you're living in sin, it's hard for you to produce. And so when he comes by, looks at your branch, he looks and sees there's nothing there. So what does he do? He takes your branch, lifts it up, starts to take water, and starts to clean it off. He cleans it off, and then after he cleans it off, he ties it up. And the reason why some of you feel like you're not going anywhere is because God had to rinse you from all of the dirt that you were in, all of the mud that you were in, and put you in a holding pattern where it's like you're flying, you see where you're supposed to land, but you can't land. And the reason why God shows you where you're supposed to land is so that it can create an appetite in you to want more for your life. And some of you want more for your life, but you don't have nothing going for you. I'm not talking about you that say, well, I'm not where I want to be, but I got something going. I'm talking about you that have nothing going. You have no fruit at all. It's is a very real thing to be saved and barren and the reason why it's frustrating is because in your heart you know God has put something on the inside you know God has put something deep down on the inside of you to do more but what God does is he ties you up and when God ties you up he's not tying you up to be mean he's not tying you up to be angry he's tying you up to allow all of the residue of your yesterday to get out of you so that the sun can start to strengthen you so that you can have the capacity to produce what he saw you were supposed to produce but here's the thing when you're in a holding pattern you fly around and you just keep flying you don't really go anywhere you're in one spot until the place is prepared for your landing there are some things that God has to not only prepare you for, but he also has to prepare the place. So what happens is, is a lot of times the place is ready, but you're not ready. The place is ready, but we're not ready. So what God does is he disciplines us. Us who are not producing anything, we are barren. God disciplines us. Us who are producing, we who are producing, we who are producing, what God does for us is he prunes us. Discipline is about sin. Pruning is about self. So if you're not producing, it's because you're stuck in a sin place that causes you not to produce. But if you are producing, God still doesn't say bravo. He prunes you because pruning is about self. Because a lot of the things that God wants to do in our life, the reason why he can't do it is because we are in the way of what he's trying to do. And he has to prune us out the way so that he can get through to us what he wants to do. So now here it is. It's discipline. God disciplines that which he loves. Pruning is about self. Discipline is about God's intervention to get us to the place where we need to be. So here's what God does. God sets in our heart what we are called to be, what we're supposed to do, and here's what I like to use, and you can write it down. It says this, your vocation in life is where your greatest joy meets the world's greatest need. 
Your greatest joy in life is when your greatest joy in life is when your vocation in life is where your greatest joy meets the world's greatest need. So let me say it in a different way. Frank, Frederick says it this way. The place God calls you to is a place where your deep gladness and the world's deepest hunger meet. Say it one more time. The place God calls you to is a place where your deep gladness comes and the world's deep hunger meet. Whatever God puts in your heart, that's what he put in your heart so that he can cause you to produce more fruit. But if he can't get you to produce more fruit because you're too busy getting lit, getting too busy getting turned, too busy doing your own thing, he starts to discipline you. And only a father that loves you disciplines you. And what I call it is the good hurt. God gives you the good hurt. Um, if you ever grew up in church and, and, and it was one of them old school churches where the benches were like hard as nails and, and you were talking and mama gave you that look and you wouldn't stop talking and mama just pinched you and she gave you a good hurt. And that good hurt was so that you could stay focused on whatever was happening that still didn't apply to you because they weren't talking to us back in that day. They were talking only to the adults. And so mama wanted you to be quiet so she could focus on the message and her reputation could look good that all her children are well behaved. Hey, so she gave you a good hurt and what God does is he gives us a good hurt he doesn't discipline us out of anger he doesn't discipline us because he's mad he disciplines us because you are better than what you're giving me you are wiser than what you're producing you're smarter than what you're allowing to happen in your life and so I give you a good hurt because I want to produce more out of your life and so here's what God does God God doesn't treat everyone equally, but he does treat us fairly. God doesn't treat us equally, but he does treat us fairly. Because God treats us based on our capacity. And this capacity piece is so huge because God will not ask you to bear more than he knows you're capable of. But he wants you to bear within your capacity. And so here it is. We oftentimes misunderstand what God is doing because discipline about the vine is about sin, pruning is about self, and new branches have a tendency to trail towards the ground. We like to go away from the light. We don't want to be where the light is. We want to be on the ground. And God understands that's not your place. Some of us are used to being walked on. Some of you are used to being stepped on. And God has to come and lift you up and say, that is not acceptable. I don't care if they're your mama, they shouldn't walk on you. I don't care if they're your sibling, they shouldn't. Well, you may be the youngest, that's no excuse to be walked on. There should be a level of camaraderie, mutuality, respect. God lifts you up. God will never Never pull you down God will always lift you up he will always tell you you're better than what you are there's a difference between conviction and condemnation conviction comes from God it points you to God condemn condemnation runs you away from God it says God don't love you God don't care about you conviction says God loves me so much he convicted me God cares about me so much he's calling me condemnation says run from God conviction says run to God so here it is so sin is about this so now here it is then God disciplines the fruit so he can bear more fruit God is the source of discipline he disciplines all believers and he disciplines them out of love God's job is to lift us up so that we can start producing more fruit but for some of us who are producing fruit here's the thing some of you are in the category where you're in this basket you're in much fruit you got so much going on it's crazy but here's the danger success can make you bored and make you do strange things so people teach you how to manage failure but if you don't learn how to manage success they both could be a detriment to you so here it is. So we have all these baskets. These baskets are what God is looking for. He's looking for more fruit. But here it is. When God looks at a branch that's producing fruit, he doesn't just clap at it and say, well, that's great. You're producing fruit. He starts to prune it because he understands the way to get more fruit from your life is to go against the natural tendency of the plant. 
the way that God gets more from us is to go against the natural tendency of what we think because here is the greatest killer from us producing more comfort comfort makes us stop growing and the only way God gets us to grow more is he has to go against the natural tendency of what we like. God will go against the grain. He will never let you get so comfortable to where he doesn't go against the grain. Oster, I'm telling you, what God will do is he will go against the grain. He will not, Anthony, let you get so comfortable to where you just sit there and say, oh man, I'm doing well. No, God will always push you for more and God may not ask you to give him much fruit but he may ask you to give him more fruit and for some of you that may be one grape a week for some of you you're in the more much fruit category that or the more fruit category that may be two fruits a week but God may be looking at you and saying you're in the much fruit category that's in ten fruits a week but here's the thing about God God knows we all have different capacities. My capacity is not your capacity, but God will hold us accountable according to our capacity. Okay, so here it is. God goes against the natural tendency of the plant. He goes always against the natural tendency of the plant because grapes, grapes grow vigorously, but because they grow vigorously, wood also shoots in between the grapes and if the wood stays there it's going to block the grapes from getting sunlight so the vine dresser has to come and cut out the wood so the grapes can get the maximum exposure to the light and a lot of times when we're producing we let self get in the way God told you to go back to school and you're like, well, I already got a degree. I'm good. God's like, how you tell me you good? I'm the one that told you to go. God tells you to go get another job. And you sit there talking about, well, Lord, I'm comfortable at the job I'm at. How are you going to tell me you're comfortable at the job you're at? I'm the one that told you to get the job. Because comfort is a killer. It is a killer. And a lot of you have settled for what you think is God's best. It ain't even close to God's best. And that's why God is pruning you. Because you think that you've arrived and you haven't arrived yet. And God is saying, there's more. I want you to make room for more. I want you to prepare yourself for more and when God is asking you for more it hurts like hell baby it hurts when God is pruning you it hurts when God is disciplining you because God is trying to get more he wants more room in your life he wants more space in your life he wants more territory in your life and some of you are satisfied with the success that you got and the only reason why it's no longer success because you can manage it on your own you don't even need God anymore and God is saying I want more room for you I want you to prepare for more room expand expand the capacities of your mind that I can do more I can do more I can do more so you know what makes us comfortable is uh, my friend is in town from Nigeria Sam Oye and we're chatting on Instagram and and I said you know, sometimes you feel good because you, you feel like, I got a little bit of fruit in my life. You know, shoot, I, I pray a little bit. I can go 45 minutes in the morning. I can go 45 minutes in the midday. I can listen to worship music. And then you listen to him say, my brother, my brother, I just got back from Nigeria. We just were in the mountains of God and we spent nine hours praying straight. And you think, God, dog, I ain't doing nothing. I ain't got no fruit in my life. I ain't even got a relationship with God. He says, yes, some of the intercessors, they stayed for four hours, but I led them for nine hours straight. We just prayed. And he said, you know, the problem is, is you don't have prayer stamina. You don't have prayer stamina. I'm like, man, you got a Vander Holyfield stamina, Mike Tyson stamina, right? Floyd Mayweather stamina. But the thing about it is, there is a level of more there is more there is more and the reason why you and I are frustrated is because it feels the same and we confuse them we think pruning is discipline and we think discipline is pruning it's no matter where you are in life God gives us seasons where he lets us rest where he doesn't discipline us he doesn't prune us 
but it's like a trainer. You ever train with somebody? You're running and you're tired and they say, all right, I'm going to give you a break. And you bent over. And the dumb trainer says, airs up top. I don't need to hear from you right now. I'm just trying to get my breath. And when you finally get your breath, he's like, okay, it's time to go again. He gave you a season of rest, but that season of rest doesn't last forever. He's always coming back, pruning you for more. He's always coming back, disciplining you so you can produce more fruit. Some of you are so comfortable. Well, that's just not me. I don't like to step out. I don't like to go in. Well, God is going to keep whipping you until you step out. God is going to keep stepping on you until you step out. Why? Because God is after more fruit because here's the thing you you get it most of you have islander folks or whatever as parents you know your degree has nothing to do with you your degree has everything to do with them so they can tell their friends you know my son's a lawyer right you ain't got they direct you where they think would be the proudest moment you know my son is a pastor right you know because they ain't got nothing to do with you it's the same thing with God your fruit has nothing to do with you it has everything to do with God saying that's my baby right there that's my child right there that's my fruit but here's 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 where it happens narcissism is when you eat your own fruit because fruit was never meant to be eaten by the person producing it. It was meant for other people to eat from your life. If you're getting fat off yourself, you're a narcissist. Let, let, me, let me help you, because I'm a visual learner, so I'm, I'm a big visual learner. Even in school, like, I'm a visual learner. I'm not a good writer. That's not my skill. That's not my gifting. I don't know where commas go, semicolons go. That's fine. But I'm still a Yale scholar. It doesn't matter. Anyway, so here's, what, here's the real thing. So here's the funny thing. I learn visually. So here's a chart that will help you. And you can take a picture of it. Okay, so here it is. This is going to be very helpful for you. So the issue is how do I know what's happening? When you're not producing any fruit at all, the pain you experience is because you're doing something wrong. Right? You're not producing anything. The pain you're experiencing is because you're doing something wrong. Now, when you're producing something, you're in this stage. Come here, Ramsey and, and, and Bravis, Claude. All oh, y'all matching. Praise the Lord. Look at that. Look at God. Okay, Claude, you're gonna be in the much fruit category because the black matches you. Perhaps you're gonna be in the middle. Not like, you see, y'all so racist. That's not even what I was talking about. Claude knows what I'm talking about. I was talking about his pants. Can't deal with church folk. But here it is. So Claude, Claude has, Claude has much fruit. And if he's experiencing pain in his life, it's because he's doing something right. Okay? So Lucky, let me borrow you. All right, look. Luck one. All right, so here, here it is. Luck, if luck is experiencing pain, it's because he's doing something wrong. But here it is. What is your level of fruitfulness? No fruit? Much fruit? More fruit and fruit? We should be in one of these three categories. Here's the thing, when you're in this category, God has already stretched your character to manage the weight of bearing much fruit. See, here's the problem. If you're at this level and you want to be at that level, God will never let you get to that level because you're still barking at people who have no fruit who are talking about you. The only reason why they're talking about you is because their hand is empty and they look at your hand as full. And God can't graduate you if you're going to bark at people who have no fruit and spend all your time focusing on fruitless people when you're supposed to be focused on producing more fruit. So here it is. What is the vine dresser's desire? To get fruit. His desire is to get fruit. But if you are producing fruit, what's the vine dresser's desire? To get more fruit. He's always looking for more. He's always wanting more. But then here it is. 
What is the vine dresser's desire? What needs to go? When you have nothing, what needs to go here is sin. Right? Not, when you have nothing, sin needs to go. But here's the thing I added on this one. When you have, what is the vine dresser? What needs to go in your life when you're trying to produce more fruit? Sin, because that's evident. Everybody has sin. But the other thing is self. Because we get in the way of what we are producing. Because we start feeling like, man, I did this on my own. I got here on myself. And God's like, no, you got to get out the way. Because when I ask you to do something, I already got the provision for you to do it. I will never ask my child to do something that I don't think he has the capacity to do. Yeah, okay, you missed it. The fact that God asks you to do it is a mere indicator that he knows you have the capacity to do it. He would never ask you to do something that he knows you could not do. And you're giving him an excuse. Well, God, I don't know if I'm ready. I don't think I'm, I don't know if I, and God's sitting there saying, I'm the one that made you. I know what you're capable of doing. I know what you're qualified to do. If God asks you to do it, stop letting fear talk you out of it. Stop letting your own insecurities tell you why you can't do it. I would never ask you to give me something that you cannot give me. I will never ask you to go to a place that I did not already set up for you. You are in the way. You're in the way. I'm in the way. We start looking at, well, God, I don't know. Man. I'm not sure. Are you sure you told me to do it? Because here's the thing. Mature fruit are the hardest ones to prune. Because they're stuck as clusters in their own way. And God has to get you to be willing to say yes, even if you don't know what that yes means. Even if you don't know what that yes costs you. Even if you don't know what's behind the yes. He is still looking for your yes. The first thing that God is doing with this guy is not beating him down just to get more fruit. He is beating him down to get his yes. Because your yes is the access point. Your yes is the access point for you to grow more. Because if God knows he can trust you to get a yes, then when he talks to you, you may say, Lord, I don't know how you're going to do it. I don't know how you're going to work it out. I don't know why you're calling me. I don't know why you asked me. But if you ask me, my answer is yes. I'm not going to look at my left. I'm not going to compare how much fruit I got in my basket. I'm not going to look at who's to my left. I'm not going to look to who's to my right. I'm going to look to who I'm connected to because who I'm connected to is responsible to make me produce more. The problem is, is you think you're going to do this on your own. God would never ask you to do anything on your own. He says, if you're connected to me, you can do anything. If you're connected to me, you can ask whatsoever you will and it shall be done according unto you. God is asking you not to use your strength but to trust in his voice. So now here it is. How should you feel when you're not producing fruit? You should feel guilty and sad because there's so much more in you than what you're giving. There's so much more in you than what you're producing. And you know what jealousy comes in? It comes in when you start looking at what other people's fruits are and you fail to realize what God has put in your hand. I am the true vine. You are the branches. My father is the vine dresser. So here it is. What is your guilty and sad? How should you feel when God is pruning you? Because God knows how to prune you. He twists your ear. He over there twisting your ear. You're like, Lord, that hurts. Lord, oh my God, that, that hurts. And God, God is doing that because he doesn't want you to get comfortable. He doesn't want you to stay in one place. He wants you to always know that you need me. No matter how far you go, no matter how big your basket is, no matter how elevated you become, you will always need me. You will never get to the place where you don't need me. I will always make sure you know that you need me. That's why I will always prune you give you seasons of rest, but I'm going to prune you because I need you to know that you're going to need me. Now, okay, put it down because you're blocking my sides. Okay, so here it is. What, what, should be your, what should be your response? You should feel relief and trust. So if storms break out in your life and you know you're producing fruit, you know you're doing what God said, how should you feel? Relief. Because I know I'm doing what God asked me to do. I know I'm producing what God asked me to produce. All of these things are working for my good, right? Okay, so I said at a, at a particular church, I said storms do certain things. If you're in sin, storms come to bring you to God. 
if you're not in sin, storms come to either give you more grace, they come to replace, or they come to pace you. They come to give you more grace. They come to replace things that are not supposed to be there that you've fallen in love with that God has removed. Or they come to pace you because some of you are moving faster than God. And so God sent storms to replace. He sent storms to give us more grace. And he sent storms to pace us. Okay, so now, when, what is your response? Repentance. What should be your response? Release. Release. Trust and release. Lastly, when does it stop? <laughs> when does God stop disciplining when you're in sin? When you stop sinning. Pretty simple. You stop sinning, he stops disciplining. But when does God, when does God stop pruning when God is finished? So God knows your capacity. He knows that Claude is not, doesn't have the capacity to handle this. I'm going to give this to Bravis. Because this is heavy and, and, and he may not, this weight may cause him to topple over. Because it's too much weight. He's, he's toppling over. He, it's too much weight for him. Some of you want things. You ain't toppled over, man. Some, some, of you, some, some of you want things that you don't have the capacity to handle. And so the blessing is no longer a blessing. It's now a burden because you don't have the capacity to handle it. That's why you can't be envious of what it costs people to have what they have because you don't know the weight that it is for them to have what they have. And God knows how much weight you can handle. He will never give you more than you can bear. He will never give you more than you can bear. And so God has to make sure that you have the ability and the capacity to manage. You know what gets people with no fruit? They spend all their time lucky looking at everybody else who has it. Look at what they got. Look at their baskets. Look how full it looks. They look like they ain't got no problems. They look like they ain't going through nothing. I, I'm over here, I got dealt this, I started from here, I ain't got nothing. And you're mad at yourself. And now instead of producing fruit, you start getting mad at God. You throw your fruit down and you say, God, you left me here. You gave me nothing. And God is saying, stop looking at everybody else. I need you to look at me. I am the God that called you. I am the Lord your God. Stop looking at what everybody else has. Stop looking at their marriage. Stop looking at they have children and saying, when is my time? If you focus on what I'm giving you, I will perform what I said I was going to perform. I will do what I said I was going to do. Just because I don't do it as fast as the others, I will do it in my timing. I know the right time to do it, and you need to wait on me, says the Lord. You rushing me. I already know what I'm doing. There's things about you that if I give you fruit, you'll destroy it. So let me fix your heart. Let me fix your spirit. Let me fix your character because I don't want to give you anything and then have to take it back from you because you weren't mature enough to manage what I gave you. You got to be mature enough to know that whatever God blessed me with, he knows my capacity. This is not a race on who finishes first. It's a race on finishing. It doesn't matter when you finish, as long as you finish. It doesn't matter when you finish, as long as you finish. Don't get so caught up in what everybody else is doing because all of us are feeling the same pain. Because God is pruning those that are producing. And he's disciplining those that are not producing. It all feels like pain, but the results are for a different purpose. I can't tell you 
how many times I've gotten in the way of what God wanted to do. You start looking at how smart you are, how, how uh, all the frailties and, and why you can and, and your capacity and why you, why you don't and why, you, why this and why that and why that. And I don't think I can do it. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not smart enough. I'm not wise enough. I don't think I'm educated enough. I don't think I'm smart enough. I don't know enough people. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough credit. I don't have enough resources. I don't know enough people. I don't know this. All, all my life, I've always been the last one. My family thinks I'm the last. I'm not big enough. I'm not wise enough. I don't, have enough. I don't live in a gated community. I don't have enough kids. I don't have enough wife. I don't have enough. And you make all these excuses and God is saying, like, wait, are you done? Like, are you done? Are, are you done yet? It's been five years and you've been telling God why you can't do it. It's been three years and you've been telling God why you're not capable. It's been two years and you've been telling God all the reasons you can't. Well, God ain't looking for your excuses. He's looking for your yes. He's not looking for your reasons. He's looking for your yes. I will give you the next step when you take the first step. If you take one step, I will take a step with you. If you take one step, I will take a step so stop complaining we all going to be pruned we all going to be disciplined and we all go through seasons just make sure it's pruning and not discipline because God is looking for more fruit he's looking for much fruit or he's looking for fruit. So today I ask you, what's in your basket? Make room for more. Make room for more. Make room. What you doing? Making room. What's God doing? Clearing things out. Why? Making room. He's making room for more. 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 He's making room. Oh, it sucks when he starts making room because sometimes, you know how it is, ladies, like I told you before, sometimes when your hair is making room for more, you got to cut it real short. Your hair went to a salon, it's super long. You come out, it's like my height, faded, everything. It's like, what happened to your hair? Oh, they had to cut it off because they had to tell me I need to go down a little bit so I can make room for more. And it may look like decrease, but you just keep conditioning it. You keep shampooing it. You keep styling it. You keep curling it. It may not look like much, but one Sunday it looked like you had Instagram. Like, wow, what happened? God, so you follow the process. I want to decree something over your life. 